We'll be investigating a football team today that is widely regarded as the worst football team in Scotland, Britain, and maybe even the world. Are they really as bad as they're made out to be? In football terms, you could argue yes, but as a source of pride for the locals, definitely not. We have a long journey ahead of us and herein lies the problem for this football team that we're seeing today, the remoteness of them and the level that they are trying to play at. Fort William, here we come. You know me, any long journey can't be uh, completed without a bit of caffeine. Stopped off at this incredible cafe, which is essentially what looks like an old church here and some stunning scenery. And again, this is the issue with Fort William, the football team. We are currently an hour away still from Fort William. I'd have shown you the journey up here. I've already been on the road for two hours, I think, close to two hours, if not just over. So yeah, that is um, one of the big problems that they face as a football club. I do believe that a lot of their players actually are from the local area. I'm gonna be chatting to someone from the club tomorrow. I've got a hotel stay overnight tonight near Fort William. Then we're gonna continue up north. Um, but I'll obviously show you that as we go. I'll show you the hotel when we get there as well. But yeah, I just wanna show you on a map where Fort William is compared to Glasgow. Look, you can see how far away it is from Glasgow and away from Inverness as well. So two big population centers that it's sort of in the middle of, but it's like, is it part of the Highlands in terms of its football? Of course it is, it's in the Highland League, but would it be better off going down south for some of the games? Oh, it's just, and a lot of the Highland teams are on the sort of east coast as well, and this is more west, so they're really stuck between like a rock and a hard place, Fort William, in terms of their geography. And it's really up in the air as to whether they'll actually go down next season. There was supposed to be a playoff for um, relegation between them and Banks OD. They obviously finished bottom of the Highland League, um, so I'm not sure what league they're going to be playing in next year. It's a bit of a contentious issue um, that hasn't sort of been sorted by them and the sort of SFA or Scottish Football Authorities, whoever sort of um, will be dealing with that. Um, so we won't be going into that too much. Maybe we'll have to do a revisit once that's all kind of sorted but just look at their geography in terms of the rest of the Highland League teams of which they've been playing in since the sort of mid 1980s they've been in the Highland Leagues I believe and just look at where they are compared to the rest of the teams that is the biggest sort of issue for them as a club of course they're just slap bang in the middle of nowhere especially when you consider we play football in the winter in the UK as well makes it even harder for them to travel up and down and around the country and another thing that's gone wrong for them in recent years last season they played every single game away even their home games the, the pitch was apparently deemed unfit for play um, but again we're going to be getting into all that a little bit later on we've got to head north another hour or so to get to our hotel so i'll see you there shortly There are so many things that I could have titled this video. It could have been the stadium next to Britain's biggest mountain, for instance, because this stadium that we're going to be seeing today, the home of Be uh, the home of Fort William, is just a five-minute drive or something from Ben 
Nevis. Yeah, that just shows where the region, well, where the football club is. This region of Scotland is so mountainous. The majority of my Highland videos, as I would have shown you earlier, when um, I showed you the map of like, all the Highland teams, they're usually on the east coast. Um, and kind of to the north and sort of like the middle north of Scotland if you know what I mean but this is just like on the west you're getting out towards like the Isle of Skye and places like that if you sort of keep going west and north a little bit so even more remote out this way but I mean you get views like this Now, the people who know me and know my channel know I'm really not one for negativity when it comes to football teams. I really want to show football in the most positive light. And especially in Scotland, I feel like it doesn't always get the um, most amount of coverage it deserves, especially positive coverage as well. So, especially from English people, um, I feel like in Scotland, people obviously know and love Scottish football, um, whereas I want to show it to the wider world as much as the Scots who love it as well. And the title of this video, of course, the worst football team in the world or whatever it might be, I'm not 100% sure right now, um, but when I come to upload it, it'll be something like that. Um, that is isn't to say that I think it's a terrible football club. I'm here to find the positives in it um, after all the stories and after all the other videos that have been out um, that have claimed that this is the worst football team sort of in the world. And just have a look at some of their um, like league positions in the past and some of their goal differences as well. Um, you can have like a little look back at sort of your own pace as well um, into the history of the club and some of their um, league positions. But yeah, just look at some of them. There's one where they finish on minus seven points and they regularly finished with like minus 100 goal difference and for a long time there hasn't been a lot of relegation promotion or any relegation pr or promotion out of certain league systems here in Scotland there is a little bit now we touched on that earlier with the sort of controversial um, playoff for relegation from the Highland League we still don't know if that's going to go ahead of course but essentially Fort William over the last 10 20 years have been on the back of some absolute batterings but it is I guess because of their sort of remoteness but here we go now look finally stepping foot inside the home of Fort William. I have wanted to come here for so long. And here you go, before I show you a cinematic montage of this place, Fort William this season may not be the worst team even in Scotland, let alone the world as it is so often claimed. Um, have a look at the league table of the Highland League, look at Fort William, look at their points tally and look at their goal difference. Now look at the table of the Lowland League, look at Vale of Leven. I actually saw Vale of Leven last season, I saw them lose at home 13-0 against eventual Lowland League winners, Bonnie Rig Rose. So, this season in Scotland, there has been a worse team than Fort William in terms of the football, and in terms of their points tally, and in terms of their goal difference. And that is Vale of Leven from the borderlands between sort of England and Scotland. They're a beautiful club, again, in a really beautiful area, much like Fort William, but obviously right down sort of the south of Scotland. Um, so yeah, F Fort William, not even necessarily the worst team in Scotland anymore. Perfect, mate. And we've just been chatting off camera for a while there. Yes. Your journey to here right now has been a goalkeeper for the Nike Academy at St. George's, St. George's Park, Park uh, down in England, of course, the England Training Centre, yes. and Crawley under 23s as well, as, as well as some other coaching work that we were talking about. Just tell me how you come across a job like this one up in the Highlands of Scotland. Okay, so um, I knew about this project from last season. I knew one of the boys that were here. 
Uh, the results weren't so good. Yeah. Um, my agent called me and told me about the opportunity. Um, the club was planning on bringing in a lot of international players, um, players that have good experience at professional clubs, but didn't get to follow through. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also young, uh, early in my career as well, so yep. it was perfect. You know, both of our interests aligned. Perfect, mate. And so you're obviously a London man as well. Yes, yes. Where will you be living when you're up here? Can you hear the London accent? I can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the club has a base for all the players that travel from afar, from, mm -hmm. from abroad, from London. Um, I'll be staying up there. Um, yep. I believe I should have the nicest house. There, <laughs> should do. The gaffer should have the nicest house. So you're looking forward to living in the Highlands yeah, and getting away from the hustle bustle being down south? Yeah, so we're right next to a lock um, where, the, where the base is. Yep. It's great. It's quiet. Just you have to do some first. training around yeah. there? Yeah, we'll do some running in the mornings, uh, especially for pre-season. But yeah, when you wake up, you hear birds, you know, there's no cars. It's yeah. quiet. Yeah, it's lovely up here, isn't it? Yeah, big change. And so what's your grand vision for the club? Do you have like a grand plan where you can see them going? What do you want to achieve here? Yeah, so you know, in comparison to last season, every, anything would be an improvement. But um, the idea is to, well, right now the average age of the squad is around 23. The idea is for these 23-year-olds to push on, reach their full potential. Of course, every footballer has a desire to become a professional. Um, so essentially that's the purpose. And I think if the players keep that purpose in mind, it should help us to push Fort William to where it wants to be. Perfect. So, you know, if they want to become the best, we have to show that where we are. Yeah, and so you may also be one of the youngest managers? In the world, maybe, yes. In, world, in the world or maybe yeah. in Europe as well? Yeah, maybe in Europe as well. So, or of course, in the world in Europe. But um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think that could be the case. Um, and yeah, hopefully. One of them anyway. It's a bright future ahead of you, I'm sure, mate. Or lovely, mate. I'm John Strew, uh, I'm the chairman of the club. Uh, got it by default really because nobody really wanted it. It's, <laughs> really? Not, it's not a tough job, I'm sure. It's not a job of the year, you know, you don't get many people uh, applying for it. I don't even apply for it, it's just the others left. Got given to you. I got left with it. Well mate, it's an honour, you should uh, you should be proud. Look at this, what a beautiful scenery. Uh, I'm proud, set this. I'm proud. Coming from down south and looking at the facilities, I know the clubhouse is wrong, but the changing room's good. We've got a 30 year lease on the pitch, so a new startup down south or in Wales or anywhere, I'd be screaming to have this handed to them. Yeah. You know, a ready built changing room, power to the clubhouse, and a pitch that's got drainage now. So we've got a good basis to restart the club again and just push on. And speaking of the pitch, we can obviously see and hear um, the work that's going on on it just now. Yeah. Could you explain what happened with the pitch last season and why you had to play all your games away from home? Yeah, well, it's, it's been an ongoing problem. Like, you can see if you pan the camera around, we're in a bowl. You know, yep. the houses above us, the industrial estate above us, and then you've got the biggest mountain in Britain. Yeah, of course. Uh, giving it us uh, all its water. So that all just runs onto the pitch. Top of that, there's a river there and a river there. So what we had to do was find a way of getting the water off the pitch as quick as it could come on. Now, it's got its limitations. It, 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 you know, we aren't going to shift an ocean. But what we've put in has done the job. But it was always a long term job because there's a lot of money to put drainage in, and we yeah. didn't have it. So you're looking at anywhere between £1,500,000 just for the, for the job to be done. And, and with the volunteers, we managed to get it done for about 36. Yeah. And, and the lads and everyone did it by hand. So what we did at first is we put the main tubes in uh, and, it, and it runs to a bigger tube out to the drains that way. And then the next phase was to sort of join them up with sand and stone. Uh, you can use one or the other. So basically, you, you can't get across to the drains quick enough, so it runs through the sand and yeah. the stone gets it. So phase one was done about two years ago when then COVID hit and then everyone disappeared just as it was finished. And then the league started up quite quick and it needed levelling off properly and it was a bit of a rush job so yep. we, we said it wasn't good enough so we had to come off it. But what we did then is uh, a local business, BSW Timber, uh, fantastic, give us another £10,000 sponsorship. And we got the stones in, we got it all held off, uh, a guy called Mark Ridings sort of took control of that and within like six weeks the pitch was playable again. So in a much better position now going into next season than you were last year in the issues yeah, that sort of went around the pitch? on and off the pitch, you know, with, uh, Shadab's gone but he's done some great work in the, in the background, you know, the reputation. So Shadab was, just for everybody watching who may not know, he came to prominence through football manager the game. A bit of both, everyone puts him down as football manager because that's the bits they want to hear because that's the... Okay. That's the, the fairy tale bit, you know, it gives everyone hope that they can come around as a team, but look at his background, he did have the experience as well with Altrincham, Berry, okay, youth, yeah. youth, and he did have his uh, 
don't know how you UEFA license. And he's going to be going to the World Cup. So he's going from Fort William to the World Cup with Martinez, right, at Belgium. He, he writes reports for Martinez as well. Yeah, a, scouting, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, he'll be off to better climbs. Yeah, of course. You know, it's a winter World Cup, so I think the cold rain done him in. <laughs> yeah, he of course. It. And so uh, I just chatted to Chris as well, the new manager for uh, for the new coming season yeah. as well. Um, I'm sure he's got big ambitions for the club, but it's a little bit of a contentious one, isn't it? You'll find out tonight whether you'll be playing in the Highland League or the North Caledonian League next season. Hopefully tonight, there's a hearing tonight, so hopefully, yeah, yeah, they might, they might make a decision, think the case is clear cut and make a decision tonight, or they might think it needs a bit more explaining. So yep. we'll find out tonight as what's going to happen. And so obviously I have a lot of viewers from Scotland. I also have a lot of viewers from around the world. If anyone was coming to the UK, to come and watch a little bit of football. Obviously, they come and watch their Arsenals and their Man United, their Celtics, their Rangers. Why should they also come here to watch a game as well? It's different. It's raw. You, know, the, you can stand in a stadium with 50,000 people and shout obscenities and no one's going to do anything. You come and shout it here, the man next to you will turn around and say, you what? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, if, you've got to watch your tongue and it's, it's just more raw. You, you, you're close up to the game, you can talk to the lads afterwards, you know. You, you're not going to talk to De Bruyne at the end of the match, are you? Exactly, he's yeah. Off, and you got the backdrop of the biggest mountain in Britain. Yeah, yeah. It brings its benefits and its uh, problems. Like in the winter, it can cast a big shadow over the pitch, and, and what I normally thought out by midday won't because it won't get the sun. Uh, but then it does bring a lot of people in just to have a nosy at it and, and see where the pitch is. So here we go, the clubhouse. Oh, wow, amazing. Here we go, some of the pennants. I was like looking at the pennants, yeah. <coughs> so it's uh, the lads have had a long go at repairing it many times, but. The structure's gone now, like this beam's sagging and yep. it's just it's just not fit for purpose anymore. You can tell it's dated. It's not built for modern times. Just needs a little bit of a spruce up, I suppose. These things have a lifespan, these buildings, these wooden buildings, and it's way past that. Yeah. And so we were just talking then, so I've mentioned in this video already about Vale of Leven in the Lola yeah. League, have a worse points tally than you from last season and goal difference. <laughs> and you'd actually beaten them, was it 5-0 in, in the cup? Played them in the cup, yeah. Beaten 5-0. Yeah. And also so was it, how many days was it between a league win? It was a few years ago, wasn't it? Fort William went on a run of over 800 days without a league win? Yeah, that was, uh, I think that was when the new committee, the, the old uh, board of directors all dropped down at once. And I think you got uh, Peter, Russ, Willie, uh, Woody. They took the club on, uh, threw, to, threw, threw together a team just to keep it going. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was them lot that managed to get that win. Yeah, oh, wow, amazing. Yeah, so it's the new committee that yeah, we're able to do Yeah, Peter managed to broker a deal with Cali to get a couple of lads from their academy. Uh, and that was the season that they, they broke it. And it just so happened it had to be just after the documentary as well. So it all tied in. Yeah, a day after like a, a BBC fence. documentary, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah amazing. It, I'm not saying that. BBC do a documentary about how you've not won in over 800 days and then you go and win the day after the documentary comes out. Well, this is a good time. Good Poetic. Good time. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some film buffs and some Harry Potter fans who will know where I am right now. I am a 20 to 30 minute drive away from the home of Fort William Football Club. And this is a famous viaduct where the train takes the students from platform nine and three quarters in London to Hogwarts. Another tourist attraction you're going to have to come and see if you're coming to see Fort Williams football team play. Not only is there the biggest mountain in Britain, of course Ben Nevis, there is also, I've almost slipped there, I'm on these rocks, there is also this famous Harry Potter landmark, like I say, where is it? The Hogwarts Express? I'm not a massive fan myself, I've maybe seen the first four or five movies, um, but after that, I sort of and the rest but um, yeah I'm sure there's a few people out there who like football and the Harry Potter film series as well hence why I have brought you to this very famous location here but also to sort of demonstrate the fact that obviously we're not in huge a huge major sort of built-up area right now we're in a place where um, they film these magical mythical films because of where we are right now and again linking it back to the football that is one of the biggest issues for the club is trying to have people who are going to be happy and stay here consistently to uh, try and build a team that can be successful for the future i wish chris and everybody that i met 
at uh, Fort William today at the football club. All the best for the future. I would love, love, love to see them rise through the divisions. How magical would that be? Of course, we're in a Harry Potter location here. How magic would it be to see this Highland League team who have done so poorly over the years turn things around and become a football league team? I mean, look at that. Look at that view down there. This has got to be the most stunning place I've ever been for a football vlog. And I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of, uh, a lot of football chat as well as a lot of stuff outside the football. These are the ones I enjoy the most. This is what I love having this channel for, is exploring the places I wouldn't necessarily come if it wasn't for the football. Please do hit that like button. I've driven so much in the last few days. I'm exhausted from it and it cost me so much money. So just hitting that like button really, really does help. And subscribing as well. And dropping down a comment on where you'd maybe like me to go next. A huge thank you for watching. I'll leave some videos on screen right now. Please click on mine to carry on watching. Cheers and I'll see you in the next one.